The information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Foundation podcast with Dominic Frisby, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello and welcome to the Gold Money Foundation podcast hosted in association with Frisbee's Bulls and Bears with me, Dominic Frisbee. I'm at the Gold and Silver Summit here in London and sitting next to me is Ross Norman. Ross is the owner and CEO of Sharps Pixley, the London-based bullion brokers. Um, Ross has been a, a bullion dealer with Johnson Matthey. He was gold trader with Rothschilds and Sons. He was gold refining manager for Roystons. He founded the, the bullion a website, a website many of you will know. Now, every year, uh, the London bullion market have a gold forecasting competition, and every year, Ross Norman seems to win it. And so, Ross, uh, our first thing I should say is, is to congratulate you on your, on your wonderful forecasting. Second thing to do is to welcome you to the show. And third thing, uh, what we all really want to know is, what's the gold price going to be in a year's time? Oh, well, crikey. Well, we've seen a lot of volatility in the last few months. Certainly, gold has notched up a steady 16% year-on-year increase until the last two years when it's gone up at 28%. This year, it did 36%. The market was getting, clearly getting very, very hot, and it shed 20% of that in, in just a short few days, which shook the confidence of many uh, investors and would-be investors. The market steadied now, so the outlook looks very good for, should we say, uh, a resumption of business with rather more, should we say, modest gains, perhaps only in the 15 to 20% range, not the 30% range, but the outlook based upon very sound fundamentals, based upon ongoing economic concerns, suggests to us that we've got a short few years of good uh, price gains ahead of us. I, I, um, I look at the gold chart. In fact, I stare at it most days. And, and it made a big peak in May 2006. It made another big peak in, I think it was February 2008. And the, the peak it made in, was it late August or early September this year, was a, sign, a kind of similar big peak that normally takes about a year of consolidation to sort of unwind. So, I mean, I'm looking at gradual gains, but not a huge move over the next year. Yeah, 2008, actually, this, this time is also very similar. You're talking about those, those moments you saw. Well, right now, it's very similar to 2008, insofar as we had a bit of a shock to the system, 2008, of course, being the Lehman's crisis. Um, the, the recent shock has been not only a big long liquidation on COMEX, but also the MF Global. And the price action was very similar in both situations. In other words, gold stood back. It came off. It behaved like a risk asset. Uh, in this case, it came off 20%. Um, it then normally steadies and then rises again at a rather more vigorous rate. And we've seen exactly that. So in a sense, today is a good buying opportunity. We're seeing a bit of that long building again on COMEX. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by that. I'm also encouraged particularly by, during this recent sell-off, only 25 tons of gold ETFs were sold. Now, that's less than 1% of gold ETFs. Gold ETFs, it was said, were you know, long-term investors. And the fact that they weren't shaken by this 20% retracement in the gold, merely 1% did redeem their, their shares, is encouraging. They're in for the long haul. So that metal is, 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 is good, solid buying, and it's not going to run for the hills when the markets turn. Now, you're a bullion dealer, you're a veteran bullion dealer, you're operating in the city of London, your, your finger's kind of on the pulse, that's probably one reason why your forecasting record is so good. You said to me before this interview began that you're finding a lot of high net worth individuals, a lot of hedge fund managers, again, people whose finger is on the pulse, are opting to take physical delivery at the moment. Would you care to expand on that a bit? Yeah, I mean, I'll not pretend to you that the physical delivery is always the most efficient way of buying. Investors will ordinarily buy the ETF. You'd buy it because the bid offer spread is tight, which means it's a cheap in and out. It's a liquid contract, so you can always sell your gold. So the ETF is a, a good buy on the basis that the gold is held with a bank. The motive for buying gold in the, in the form of physical is very different. It's very much those for those that... It's always quite a primal thing holding a gold bar in your hand. Uh, and it's those that perhaps have some concerns about the solvency of banks, and clearly there are at the moment. And the quality of the buying that we're seeing at the present point in time is generally fairly young people wealthy, um, and that are putting a part of their savings into the physical gold, metaphorically under the bed. Often it's vaulted you know, near, near their own house on a high security, with some high security arrangements. So in a sense, you know, the fact that we're seeing such good brisk business, in a sense, is, is, a, is a vote against the politicians and policymakers and how they're handling the current crisis. 
do you think it also represents a certain amount of concern about the safety of banks? Well, I think it does to an extent. I mean, there are, there are you know, plenty of articles suggesting that the Western banks have over-leveraged themselves. They're trying to deleverage themselves, trying to repair their balance sheets. A number of issues, particularly 2008, would have shaken the confidence of a lot of long-term investors about the, the safety of holding on money or wealth with banks. How this plays out, I don't know. And I think, nevertheless, whatever the story is, how it plays out, I think that physical buying will remain on people's radar. People buy insurance not before the fire, after the fire. And in a sense, we're, you know, we're seeing a fire now. Uh, and to that extent, I think physical buying will be with us for quite some time to come. Um, at the moment, silver's at $34, $35 an ounce. Gold's at 1700 and something like that, 1720 I, I don't know when, when... I haven't looked this morning. Um, which do you like more at the moment, silver or gold? Well, slightly different plays, aren't they? Silver, silver clearly has a, a more industrial application side to it, and to that extent, I don't like it as much. Gold is really has got this... They've both got good fundamentals underpinning them, but my preference is for gold really for the economic premium that gold's attracting for a safe haven. It's a lifeboat in a crisis, and let's remember it's a very small lifeboat. If you could liquidate the world's gold, all the world annual gold production, and sell it at, market, at current market prices... The gold market has a value less than Vodafone. It's a small market. So for those who are concerned, you know, they're getting into the gold market now, but it's a small lifeboat. I prefer gold over silver because of that economic crisis issue. Um, I want to ask you another question now. Um, you, well, I've got two questions for you. In your presentation just now, you, it was rather more sober than some of the presentations we heard today. Uh, you talked about a long-term possible high being three and a half to four thousand dollars. Um, we've ha heard some much bigger numbers bandied about. I'm about to do a presentation that's going to bandy about much higher numbers. Um, is that, do you, tell us about some of your long-term targets for gold. Well, I think three and a half thousand over the next short few years is reasonable. I made actually a forecast of four thousand a couple of years ago in Dubai at a gold conference. And there was, there was a sort of half an intake of breath from half of the people and a, four, and a bit of a laugh that it was even possible. We've got to remember that gold started this year at $1,400 an ounce. We're currently 1750 Dominic. Yeah. Get your market right. <laughs> um, so really, um, do we think it can go to, can gold double from here? Yes, it can, ostensibly. I hope it does so quietly. I mean, as a gold bull, you've got to slightly, though, part of you's thinking, though, is do you really want to live in a world where gold's $4,000 an ounce with everything else that goes with it? If it gets there, I'd like it to be steady based upon sound fundamentals, not an economic crisis. None of us are going to benefit in that kind of world. So a sound, steady increase in gold would be good for all. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, Ross, one last question, if I may. Um, how long have you been a gold dealer for? 30 years. So you lived through the late 80s, the 90s? Yes, I saw a little bit of that. And uh, tell me how it's changed. Give me a couple of indicators how it's changed. The, market, the trading market's changed. How the market's changed, how the atmosphere around gold has changed. Well, as a traded market, it's, it's different insofar as... It, back then, you know, the banks used to do all these, to provide coins and provide the full service. Now they don't. So it's a smaller market. London, is a, even though it's the global capital for trading gold, it's a really small market. There's only 30, 40, 50 people only that really are in the know uh, calling the market. Now it's, it's, it caters to the very much the interbank market, and there is a whole new raft of people coming at the bottom end, if you like, and I put myself as one of those. You know, dot-coms, people looking to create new innovative business ideas. That's the exciting bit where you've got businesses like your own business, like my business, trying to do something with a very old state business. We wouldn't have been seen 20 years ago. Now people who are innovative and resourceful have a place in the gold market, and that's quite encouraging. How, how political a metal is gold? In what sense, sorry? How, how much do central banks know the value of gold Ooh. and politicians? Ah, well, we, uh, several questions within that. I was there are, it's an incredibly loaded question as well. Okay. Well, I was wondering if you were talking about is it manipulated and managed, and I was wondering whether the policymakers are savvy enough. Or, I, I was going in that direction. But, yeah. The Gordon Brown issue? Well, yeah, that too. And the manipulation issue? Well, certainly the market, I don't believe, manages and manipulates itself. It's too small. It's too unruly. I mean, the market's at odds with itself invariably. Uh, the, the notion that the gold market could run a short position for 15 years, 12, 15 years, run a massive loss of the gold going to seven fold, is just impossible. The banks would close those desks down. They don't have any particular love for gold. I don't believe there's any scope for suggesting that the gold market's manipulated at the trading level. Do central banks manage the market? Nah, possibly. There are reserve stabilization, fund, reserve stabilization funds. And don't forget, gold's a small one. I mean, it's compared to the dollar and equities, but it's a tiny little vehicle. You know, if you wanted to create the appearance of goodness in the world, well, you'd tap gold in the head and say, be quiet, sit down. And it's easily managed. And also the VIX index come to that. 
So the opportunity is there for the policy makers to make the appearance of being good, but at the end of the day, it's nothing like long-term hardcore policies which make it happen, not the appearance of it. We've had too much appearance of lately anyway. All right, well, Ross, uh, thank you very much for talking to us, and why don't you give out your website as we close and tell us a bit about it. It's a free website. It's called www.sharpspixley.com, and it's got a large and very resourceful source of gold market prices, charts, and information. It's fabulous. Sharpspixley.com. Ross Norman, thank you very much. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section.